These are all iconic songs we know and all sing, I'm sure. Absolutely. White Christmas, Putting on the Ritz, There's No Business Like Show Business. See? <laughs> and of course, God Bless America. Well, Arizona Theatre Company is bringing the man behind them all, Irving Berlin, to vibrant, toe-tapping life on stage. Hershey Feldler is stepping into Berlin's shoes, and he joins us now. Thank you so much Good for morning. joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited because I love Irving Berlin's music, mm -hmm. but before we get into the show, I kind of sure. want to talk to you about, you have portrayed several composers at this point. A bunch of things, a bunch of different characters, yeah, all in one-man shows, and directed one-man shows, produced them as well, as well as other plays, but the, uh, the fun is being able to communicate directly to the audience about a character in the skin of a character, and, and bringing that to life every night for two hours is a challenge, as you know, you're an actor, yeah, you know. Um, you know how hard that is. It takes a whole lifetime to be able to learn how to do such a thing, but the, the rewards are wonderful. Getting an audience to join you on the journey is really a lot of fun. Well, and when you're stepping into someone that is a true life person, mm. you're, you know, you're stepping into Irving Berlin's shoes or, or whomever right. you're stepping into, is there a process to kind of get into their mind, their mannerisms, everything about them? Well, in this case, it's, uh, well, in all the cases, it's always about knowledge. Yeah. It begins with knowledge and then it, it ends with practice. But you actually have to know. You can't pretend it's not about just reading a line and, and sort of putting on what you think it is. In the case of portraying composers and music, one has to actually be able to play, which is my thing, I'm a concert pianist, sing a little bit, um, and certainly be able to delve into the character, and that requires knowing the actual history. Um, in the case of Berlin, he lived till he was 101 years old and died at 88, and his daughters are still living. So they actually came to me with the idea of doing this. He's got three daughters, and just a very brief story, when I was sitting across from them, uh, realizing that Irving Berlin had written songs for them. Part of his life was doing that kind of thing that I was sitting in across of Mary Ellen Barrett in New York City as we were discussing doing this play, his eldest daughter, realizing that he had written a particular song for her. The song he wrote for her was um, Blue Skies. Blue skies smiling at me, nothing but blue skies, right? And uh, realizing that that was actually the first talkie in The Jazz Singer with Al Jolson. So the first piece of music ever used as a piece of film was a song by Irving Berlin. But the thing was, I was watching this transpire, this meeting, sitting opposite this woman, realizing that the entire history of actually what we do in America, in fact, having live television with sound coming, started with a song written upon this girl's birth. Oh, wow. And I thought, that's really something. In 90 years, you can capture an entire history of art, in fact, in the world. And uh, that really moved me to tell this story. And it's a great story. Absolutely, but now when you're putting this amazing story together for the stage, there's so many tunes that you could pick from, from Berlin. 1,500. So how did you pick? 232 top tens, 25 I number ones. It. You know, there are certain things you have to do. How can you not do White Christmas? How right. can you not do Easter Parade? How can you not do, you know, all the wonderful songs that a Jew wrote for, the, <laughs> for Christian holidays, Catholic holidays, <laughs> you know, it's perfect. Um, uh, you have to do um, the things that are known always. You have, But then the interesting thing is once you've done that, what can you do to actually advance the story? Stuff that isn't actually known or well known today. And that's really where it gets really interesting for, for the public is finding out just how much God Bless America. And a little tidbit for the public watching today, you know, God Bless America, just a few days ago we had the 9-11 uh, anniversary. And if one remembers, uh, you know, 9-11, it was on everywhere in the country, people singing God Bless America. So much so that people thought it was a folk tune, didn't even know it was Irving Berlin's song. But if you think back to the origins of the song, he wrote it in 1918 for the First World War, was told that nobody cared about it, that it was awful, got to 1938, instituted it again for Armistice Day, Kate Smith sang it, became unbelievably famous during World War II, but created a fund. He never made a cent from it. From God Bless America, every single penny wow. was donated to the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts of America to this day. Oh my gosh. Wow. So that's a song written in 1918, almost 100 years old, has never made its composer a cent for the simple reason, and it's made the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts probably hundreds of millions of dollars. This is the kind of man we want to know about. Who does such a thing and why? And it was really about his coming to this country when he was a child and being so grateful, because the last memory he had was his village in Russia being burned to the ground by a pogrom, being, you know, by the Tsar's henchmen comes to this country is given absolutely everything um, and it goes to also what's happening in this country with regard to immigration now who do you let in who do you not let in and why and what are the what is the responsibility 
And here was a man who recognized the responsibility and gave back to the degree that very few people do. Well, and I think I think this is amazing that you're bringing this to Tucson. I know you've come to Tucson before to do other mm -hmm. uh, pieces. Why is it that you think that you keep coming back to this community? The food is great. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, yesterday, the polka cosa for lunch. There we go. Oh, I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, and it's just a few blocks away. So, no, other than that, the people are really supportive. It's yes. a wonderful community. The weather is great. You know, for all, for all if it's desert, it's easy to live here. You got little dogs in the humane society. So I cute, you know. but they're cute. There's a little dog in the world. And uh, people are just generous. So yeah. when you come to a town where people want to enjoy, they want to celebrate, they want to go out, they want to have a good time, it's, it's just a, a, an enjoyable experience, which is why I come back. Well, we can't wait to see this uh, performance and, and, and seeing this. And I, and I know there's going to be a separate connection because everyone's going to know these songs. There's going to be plenty of singing yeah. along. So, Harshi, thank you so much for coming and thank telling you. us that incredible tidbit, which I never would have known otherwise. There's lots more like it. I'm sure. And you can watch Hershey Felder as Irving Berlin at the Temple of Music and Art starting today through October 4th. For tickets and more information, you can call 622-2823 or visit ArizonaTheater.org.